Smash it up. This is it. This is Paradisus La Perla. This is the hotel I've been looking forward to the most throughout my entire Playa del Carmen stay. Uh, not only have I been looking forward to this hotel, I've been looking forward to staying at a Paradisus for a long time now. It's one of my most requested hotels. Hopefully I'm getting things started at the right one. It is in a beautiful location, Playa del Carmen, and this one specifically is adults only. This is Paradisus La Perla. Paradisus La Perla of Playa del Carmen is literally one of the jewels of the Melia Hotel portfolio. Although Paradisus La Perla is only 45 minutes away from the Cancun airport, the idyllic property is set in the middle of a mangrove forest, creating an experience that fuses chic modern luxury with gorgeous tropical serenity. Upon arriving as I stepped out of my car and made my way into check-in, my first impression was more than special. It was profound. The pre-lobby was a magnificent introduction to the property. The towering onyx walls, one-of-a-kind chandelier, sophisticated decor, and grand open layout perfectly embodies the personality of the entire property. The main lobby was classy, comfortable, and crisp. Overall, it was one of the best lobbies I've ever been in because it was warm, welcoming, and most importantly, functional. It's a place you'll actually go back and spend time in, which is very rare. I booked the cheapest room on property but was upgraded to this suite with a pool view because of my Expedia status. The suite itself was lovely. It wasn't quite as luxurious as I was expecting, but it was such a naturally comfortable setup. The large kitchen had two dining areas, a formal dining table and then a breakfast nook bar. The mini bar was condensed but well stocked. Lots of waters, three different types of cervezas, and something you usually don't see, snacks. The separate living room was a great feature just for the added space alone. You can access the balcony from here or the bedroom. On the other side of the wall is the bathroom, which may be the best room in the entire suite. It has everything I look for. A dual vanity with external sinks, a spacious and classy rainhead shower with a water closet on the other side, both with floor to ceiling frosted glass, and there was even luggage storage, which I thought was brilliantly convenient. The bathroom flowed and emptied into the bedroom, which I thought was a little undersized, but the beds made up for it. They were glorious. They were pillow-like and some of the softest I've ever been on. Anchoring and punctuating the suite is the balcony, which overlooks the pool area. It was impressively spacious and surprisingly private, which is great because there was a nice jacuzzi tub tucked away in the corner. The room itself was awesome, but unfortunately there was one fatal flaw that overshadowed all of the outstanding attributes I just mentioned. It was a dreadful deal breaker and I will never book it again. More on that later. All right, good morning. It is my first official full day here at Paradisus. Big plans for today. There's a pool party later this afternoon, but it's just not any pool party. I'm told it's a special pool party that only happens once per month. I'm so curious about that. I'm just generally interested on how Paradisus does their pools. So I'm really looking forward to that. But before I get down there, I wanna talk about dinner last night at Bana, the adults only sushi place. It was the best meal I've had on this trip up until this point, even better than the Italian place from the night before. The food was incredibly delicious and fresh, especially for an all-inclusive restaurant. I can't remember seeing high-end culinary components like foam on an all-inclusive dish, ever. Uh, the service and the setting is what really made it stand out. Uh, it was impeccable, and then the dishes came out right away. And overall, it felt like a standalone place you would actually go out and pay for, like in Miami. You know, it was very Miami-esque with the tall ceilings and also the deco design. So it was quite simply, but emphatically, the perfect way to start my trip. Uh, things are definitely gonna escalate today though, and that starts with the pool. The 
pool was surprising. The, the first thing surprising about it is that the pool party went until 5 p.m. On the docket, it said it only went until three. So that's not only a couple more hours of fun in the sun, you could pretty much party into the evening. It was festive, it was a great time, but it was underneath an umbrella of class. It was a classy pool party. Now, there was a DJ out there yesterday, and there will be a DJ out there tomorrow, but I'm told today was special because once a month they fly in some special DJ, and apparently this guy was a big deal. Uh, they had him situated on the bridge, which overlooked the entire pool area. He was dressed in a toga outfit, and he was insane. His set list was incredible. It was amazing. Uh, it got the crowd energized the entire time, which is exactly what you want from a DJ. Also adding to the specialness of the day was there was food out there. So you could replenish, refuel, take a break in the shade. Uh, you could also experience uh, some craft cocktails. I think there were three separate craft cocktail stations. Uh, I had an opportunity to try a traditional Mexican cocktail with some shaved ice right off the block. That was awesome. Uh, and then the Citron people were here. So you could walk up to the Citron place that all their products. Uh, you could kind of tell them what you like or what you're in the mood for. They recommended a drink right on the spot. And then there just was another craft cocktail station as well. So crafted cocktails, delicious food, an awesome DJ, a fun time, all underneath an umbrella of class. So that was the pool and I need to get changed and ready for dinner. I'm off to what I am told is the coolest restaurant here. I'm going to the adults only Peruvian place, Fuego. I'm only halfway through my stay here at Paradisus, but I already have a pretty good read on the property. There have been some negatives that I've remained silent on for now because I'm just not sure how important they are yet. One thing I love is that this property is serene. It is a naturally comfortable, relaxing, and soothing place to be. And that's because Paradisus La Perla is set right in the middle of a mangrove forest. Mangroves are trees that border tropical waters, and this one functions kind of like a coral reef. It's a complete ecosystem that influences the surrounding environment. This one protects the beaches from erosion and also provides homes to all kinds of animals. I just happened to stroll by this friendly feline, and I had to take a moment to pause and reflect. Usually my heart gets heavy when I see a stray, but this cat has one of the best lives ever. He was friendly and happy, looked to be healthy and was definitely well fed and he's living every single day in paradise in the most exclusive and luxurious area of paradisus la perla the reserve the reserve at paradisus is the extra premium option of the property that takes the luxury experience to the next level the list of perks and benefits is a page long there are so many but more importantly they are actually meaningful and useful there are way too many benefits to talk about, but here are a few of the unique and cool ones. They offer a luggage packing and unpacking service. Daily ironing and laundry is included. There's a room spa option where they will come to your hotel room and set up your bathroom and bathtub with products from their spa. And my favorite one was the sunglass cleaning service offered at the pool and the beach. I would use that constantly. And like you'll find at other upgrade programs at Luxury All-Inclusives, this package includes a dedicated lobby, a personalized butler, upgraded rooms, and exclusive dining options. On paper, it's the best upgrade program I've ever come across, and for the first time in a long time, I was excited to hand over my money. But it was a lot of extra money. It was an extra $300 per night per person, which is close to the price of the room. It would have immediately doubled the price of my stay, and although I'm certain the reserve experience is awesome, I was doubtful that it would provide double the experience. So ultimately, at least for this time, I opted out. Day number two, my second full day here at Paradisus, I declare today beach day, and it could not come at a more appropriate time. I'm really excited to go check it out. Uh, as I'm walking there, I wanna talk about dinner last night at Fuego. Uh, Fuego was not Fuego, uh, no bueno, not good, um, which is really disappointing because it, it's the one that had the most hype. 
But I get in there and you know, it, it's stylish and it's trendy and it's swanky, but then I realized that's just kind of like a main common area that some of the restaurants share. And I got into the actual restaurant and it was really basic, just like a square room, very all-inclusive-esque. But you know, that's okay. It should be about the food first and then the experience and then the atmosphere secondarily. And the food was not good, N really not at all. Um, the main course I was looking forward to the most was the lamb. Uh, it wasn't edible. I, I chewed on that lamb for a good four minutes. I tried my hardest to break down whatever that was. Uh, I couldn't do it and eventually just gave up. I ordered a lot of stuff and I just didn't find it appetizing, not in the least. So now I don't know, is the food here good or is it bad? Because I had two completely different experiences. You know, if there was a slight drop off in experience and food from the night before, I'd get it. But this was a completely just overall opposite experience. So I guess I will find out tonight and tomorrow what it's really all about here. Uh, as of right now, it's, uh, it's beach time. So the beach was amazing, right? How beautiful was that beach? That beach was terrible. It was ugly. You really need to pay attention to what type of content you consume anywhere because I can make any hotel look busy or dead or fun or boring or beautiful or ugly. I just tell you how it is. And that was the definition of being beautiful from afar, but far from beautiful. It unexpectedly got a little windy out there, so I thought I'd finish my thoughts in here. Yeah, beautiful from afar, but far from beautiful. I'm never critical of a hotel about the actual water. They can't control that, whether it's the water color, if it's murky, if it's clear, seaweed in the water or not, but what a hotel can directly influence and control is the beach experience. And the best hotels treat the beach as if it's part of the property, as if it's a room. They clean it every day, they maintain it. This beach looks like it hasn't been maintained for days, if not weeks. Just clumps, big piles, bushes full of seaweed. And to me, that's the worst thing, is that you accumulate the seaweed, but then you just don't haul it away. It's an extra step. Uh, the adults only section, uh, there was one. I was pretty sure I was at it, since that's where I'm staying. And it looked to be separated from the main section, the family section, by a volleyball court. Literally, uh, the volleyball court was right next to it and the ball was continually going into the adult section. Uh, that was really annoying. And then also, it was just disjointed. The whole seating area, it just wasn't organized. I thought the arrangement was poor. Yeah, it just wasn't a good beach experience. It was a letdown. You know, you have these expectations and I guess you shouldn't have them, but we all have them. And I thought Paradisus, La Perla, Playa del Carmen. I just had these huge expectations for the beach and underwhelming extremely underwhelming. The best part of my day was actually finding the Cocos Bar, which is just kind of tucked away. It's kind of nestled back in a tropical area and it was really tranquil and quiet, hardly anybody in there. And I was able to get some custom cocktails that were delicious. I also ordered a burger. They cooked it right in front of me, came out right away. It was delicious, super fresh. Um, so that was pretty much the highlight of the day, but overall kind of two setbacks back to back. Fuego, the dinner from the night before, and then the beach experience. So now I'm not wondering, is the food good? Now I'm wondering, is this hotel good? What's up with this hotel? Um, I've seen the beach, I've been to a couple restaurants, I've been to the pool, and which way is this gonna go? Initially, when I first got here, I would have thought for sure this was gonna be an easy rating, and now I don't know which way this experience is gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna keep it moving, and I'm off to dinner, and that is at the adults only buffet.
So that was dinner at the adults only buffet and I indeed have thoughts, but they're gonna have to wait and that's because there are two parties tonight. One is starting at 9 p.m. It's starting right now. That is at the main lobby bar. And another one is later in the evening. That's at 11 p.m. That's at the after hours lounge. So it's my third and final day here at Paradisus, and I'm gonna switch things up a little bit today. You're probably not gonna see this coming. Before I get to that though, I wanna talk about last night. So the adults only buffet. I like that it was adults only. I think they took more chances on the menu. Uh, they had selections that were more catered towards the adult palate. There were some things I've never seen before, such as the sangria station, which I thought was a really cool touch. Also, it was shockingly and surprisingly a comfortable and peaceful place to eat. Those words usually aren't used to describe an all-inclusive buffet. I will say though that the buffet is a little small. I noticed this a couple days ago. I didn't mention it, I wanna go back again and just confirm and it is indeed small. Uh, certainly smaller than the ones over at Hilton and Wyndham. And then last night, the main place to be at was the first party at 9 p.m., which was at South Bar. That's the main bar for this adults-only property. That's the most social place to be. The after-hours spot was fun. There's a dedicated DJ in there, and it's nice to be able to have a drink somewhere after 11 p.m. As far as today, you know, I've done the beach, I've done the pool, I've gone to most of the adults-only restaurants. I'm gonna switch things up, and I wanna check out the other hotel here. That's the other paradisus, that's the general side, the family side. When you stay at La Perla, you have access to both. So I wanna go check that out, see what it's like, and then I'll talk about later, later. So great news, uh, the properties are pretty much identical and that's great news because you're not missing out. If you're over there thinking that you're missing out over here, it's pretty much the identical setup. If you're over here wondering if you should go over there, don't, you're really not missing out. Uh, it's pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, at first I thought this layout was a little off, but once you learn it, it's actually kind of smart. There is the adults only property. Uh, we're gonna have the exclusive adults only stuff such as restaurants and pools. Then there's the general area where you share some of the restaurants. And then on the other side of that is the family area. I'm actually, if you can believe it, heading back over to the family hotel tonight. Uh, I'm off to dinner and I'm going to the Italian restaurant Capella. So dinner at Capella, my final night at Paradisus, restored my faith in the food at that property. It was the second best meal I had during that entire stay. Every dish was quality and delicious. The short rib could be cut with a fork. That's always a sign of fantastic short rib. I ordered a pizza and it was the best pizza I had during my entire Playa del Carmen stay. And I ordered the carpaccio as an appetizer and it actually came out at the end. And I was over it because I was already fully immersed and pretty much finished with my two entrees, but I decided to eat it anyway, and I'm so glad I did because it ended up being the best dish of the entire evening. Rarely do I do this, where I am not doing my wrap up at the hotel, but I was generally conflicted about my experience at Paradisus La Perla. In some ways, it wowed me. 
but in other ways it was lackluster and disappointing. So I decided to order breakfast on my last morning and think about it. This was not the first time I've ordered room service at Paradisus La Perla. I actually ordered it probably two or three times throughout my stay. The first time I ordered it was late night after my disappointing meal at Fuego and I definitely worked my way around the menu. Everything I sampled was fantastic. The room service was actually one of my favorite experiences and best things about Paradisus. The menu was extremely wide, diverse, and comprehensive. The food was fresh, delicious, and high quality. And every single time I ordered it, it arrived in 45 minutes or less. After finishing my room service, I was even more conflicted about how I felt about Paradisus. So I walked the property. I wanted to gather my thoughts and relive all of my experiences that accumulated over the last four nights. Uh, after that, I still wasn't sure how I felt about it. Again, I rarely encounter this. In some ways, it wowed me, and in some ways, it was lackluster. So I left. I didn't want to finish the video and do a wrap-up when I still wasn't sure. So I came to this hotel. I slept on it. I thought about it some more. I woke up, and now my thoughts are completely clear. Let's get the negatives out of the way. I didn't like the fact there was only one pool experience. Yes, the pool was large and fun and energetic, but it didn't match the overall vibe and energy of the hotel. It was way too loud. Every day there was blaring music at top decibel levels from noon to 5.30 p.m. Also, there was absolutely no serenity, no relaxation, no peace, no quietness in your room. The music was so loud, it was hard to even concentrate while you're in your room. Absolutely no naps, no reading a book, that'd be impossible. The only escape from the pool music in your room was either putting on headphones or turning on the TV at a higher volume. It's just interesting and ironic how a place called Paradisus didn't make the room experience paradise at all. The beach is another one I was very vocal about. I absolutely had a complete disdain for the beach. It's one of the worst beaches I've seen at any all-inclusive. Uh, the maintenance and management is the biggest concern. Seaweed was gathered but not hauled away. It looked like it was left there for days or weeks. The adults-only section felt makeshift. It wasn't orderly or organized. It was very disjointed. And there was little to no separation from the main portion of the property. The adults-only section looked to be loosely enforced at best. And lastly, overall, the hotel was just plainly and simply inconsistent. The service overall was excellent. I'm gonna talk about that momentarily. They forgot to give me my wristband when I checked in, which means I got to the main portion of the hotel and was not allowed to enter because you can't get to the hotel without a wristband. I had to walk all the way back to get a wristband. It was a very time consuming experience. And some of the staff interactions weren't always the best. Now overall, I love the service. It was excellent. I'm actually gonna talk about it further. But one of my waiters had a personality better suited for a morgue than being in hospitality, and a couple of the bartenders were quite rigid. They didn't want to go out of their way to make me anything really unique or special, even after I already tipped them handsomely. But the service overall was excellent. Just because it's not perfect doesn't mean it wasn't amazing. It is actually one of the benefits of staying at the hotel. Overall, it was excellent. Whether it was ordering custom items from room service, and they also gave me a late checkout. Now, I believe I qualified for a late checkout because of my extraordinary Expedia status, but nonetheless, they didn't have to honor that, and they could have said, no, we were full, but they went out of the way to accommodate me. They gave me a really late checkout. Uh, the service, like I said, wasn't perfect, but at this price, I don't think you're paying for perfect service. It was, however, absolutely excellent. Another big standout about Paradisus La Perla is its interconnection and integration with nature. The hotel is a very environmentally conscious and eco-friendly place. No plastic water bottles. They were all glass. Recycling baskets everywhere. In fact, I think this is an actually eco-friendly certified hotel. The experience from naturally transitioning from a gorgeous luxury hotel setting to a placid, calm, natural setting was such a unique experience. Uh, and lastly, one of the most unique things, memorable things, positive things is how pieces of the property that are usually an afterthought that really aren't invested in much at all were actually some of the most enjoyable places on this property. The lobby, for example, is actually a place I went back to and spent some time often. Uh, fresh hors d'oeuvres all day, all night. It had day beds, private rooms, desks, couches, televisions, all in a spacious, luxurious, comfortable, and private setting. 
And then there was random seating throughout the property. Uh, places that you typically don't pay attention to or just ignore, like the walkways, the seating outside restaurants, the seating on terraces, and just in random parts outside. These are areas that I not only noticed, but I enjoyed and actually spent time in. So you can see why I am conflicted. The most fundamental parts of the property, the beach, the pool, the serenity of the rooms were majorly underwhelming. However, some aspects that I rarely pay attention to were extreme standouts, such as the lobby, the appreciation for the environment, and the extreme interconnection with nature. Ultimately, in the end, I'm gonna rate Paradis as the Perla a three. It's just too inconsistent to give it a higher rating. It underperformed in the wrong areas, and it also outperformed in the wrong areas. My biggest takeaway is so ironic, and that is that this could be a hotel that is perfect for a lot of you. I get asked this question all the time, James, where can I find a luxury hotel with a little bit of party? People will say, we're not big party people, we just want a little bit of a vibe or a little bit of energy. And up until this point, there wasn't really a hotel that I could recommend because almost always it is binary. It's either pretty much all luxury or it's gonna be really upscale, but the crowd is gonna be very quiet, if not boring or it's gonna be a complete party vibe or the crowd is gonna be ruckus and energetic, but you're not gonna get much of a luxury feel. And this is the first hotel where I could say the majority of it, 75, 80% is gonna be luxury, but there is a small part of a party vibe or some edge, about 20 or 25%. And it's so fascinating that I finally found a hotel that I could recommend like that. And it's not in Putacana, it's not in Cancun. It's at Paradisus La Perla in Playa del Carmen.